Welcome back to Skinny Brew Rugby. It's round 14 of Super Rugby and it's just the last part of the season left. Uh, this weekend see six games. We have one New Zealand derby and one Australian derby. If you want to keep updated throughout the weekend and see what I say about every game or interesting news, check out the Facebook page in the description below. Let's get into the first game. The Hurricanes versus the Jaguars. The seasons of the two teams, the Hurricanes 9 out of 12, uh, they lost 5 games, they've won, where the Jaguars 6 out of 11, last week they lost but the weeks prior to that they had 4 in a row that they won, uh, they really put up a fight against the Chiefs last week. Uh, even though they fielded their second stringers last week, uh, strong players like Krivi, Levanini, Kubali, they are back in this week's team, so they are fielding their strongest team for the Hurricanes. Um, and then for the Hurricanes, they are fielding their strongest team as well, except for resting Bowden Barrett and putting James Marshall, um, the outside back, in on fly half. The season has been great for the Hurricanes and they will want to continue with this form to put some pressure on the Crusaders who are just above them on the pool um, and they are touring South Africa so who knows what can happen to the Crusaders um, over here. Expect great tries from both teams in this game. Both teams like playing running rugby um, and they like taking the ball out wide and having some chip kicks. Um, for the Jaguars, that guy, Kansalieri, he's a small winger, but he really likes running and ducking under tackle. For me, I still think the Hurricanes have the upper hand here. They are a very good side. I think the Hurricanes will win by 15. Next up, it's the Bulls traveling to Melbourne to face the Rebels. Both teams have a record of 6 out of 11 this season. The Rebels, they are very strong at home. Uh, winning four out of their last five games at home um, But for the Bulls They are one of the most inconsistent teams in this um, Competition they always when they win the one week they lose the next week if they lose they win the next week So if they continue on that form losing last week, they'll probably win this week But it's a bit different. It's their first game on tour the Rebels still went with Cooper and Genia as their halfback combination. Cooper not in the best form of late, but I think he'll get himself back on track. Their newest recruit, recruit the Rebels, Tumua from the Leicester Tigers. He came in on Monday and he's already on the bench for the Rebels. And he, as we know, he can cover quite a bit of positions. Uh, he can cover fly half. Uh, centers, even fullback, so he's a great player to have on that bench. Uh, the Cooper Genia combination is facing off against Pollard and Warner. Um, Papir is still on the bench for the Bulls, and I just don't know what their plans are with him. He's, he's one of their best scrum halves, so he's better to me than um, Van Sale and Warner. Obviously, that's, uh, that's my perspective, but it's you put a Springbok on the bench who needs to get t game time this season for the World Cup and he just has to bench the whole time behind guys like Warner or Van Sale. Uh, the Rebels, they, have, they won by one point in 2015, the last time that these two teams faced off in Melbourne. Big issues that the Bulls had, their defensive issues were massive last week against the Crusaders. They gave poor clearance kicks, giving the ball straight back to the um, fullbacks and the wingers. Um, and yeah, that they can also not do against the Rebels, who also have a very dangerous backline um, that can compete with the best of them at times. The Rebels, they will really want to win this game to top the Australian Conference again. The Brumbies are on a bye this week, so if they win, they have the chance to go at the, go to the top of the conference again, especially with the two teams, the Reds and the Waratahs, hot on their tracks. We all know how close the South African Conference is, so we all know 
the South African teams all want to win and anyone that wins can get the top of the conference. But for me, the Rebels by four. Next game is the Blues versus the Chiefs and I think this is going to be the game of the weekend. Last week we saw Nanu versus Laumape. This week is Nanu versus Anton Leonard Brown and it's going to be great. The last time these two guys faced off, I think it's four or five weeks ago, Nanu won the battle between them, scoring two tries and even getting a massive bump off on Anton Leonard Brown. So I think ALB is going to try and get back at Nanu in this game, but um, we all know the capabilities of Nanu. Both teams need to win this one if they want to keep their season alive. The, the team that loses this game can just say bye bye to their season because um, they're not going to be able to catch up to the other teams anymore. Blues, they've had a great season but they've had a lot of close losses where the Chiefs, their season has derailed because of a lot of injuries and they pre they pretty much have a young team over there or a very inexperienced team. Weber, he's back at the scrum off again, he's captaining. Uh, he's really scoring tries these, day these days, like a try or two every week. And there are talks of him becoming an All Black or at least the third choice scrum off for the All Blacks. The last game the Blues, the Blues and the Chiefs played, the Blues lost by four to the Chiefs um, away. Uh, the season for the Blues, four out of six at home, which isn't the best, but the home ground advantage usually counts in your favor but they're facing the Chiefs that have a never say die attitude and that's what I love about seeing them play they never quit the Blues they are at home the Chiefs have a little bit of better form so it's also a very difficult one but for me the Chiefs by five then it's the Australian derby between the Reds versus the Waratahs. A few weeks ago, no one gave the Reds a chance. They are a pretty inexperienced team. Uh, they are one point above the Waratahs at the moment in the Australian Conference, sitting in third place. Guys that's standing out for them, McDermott, he's been in good form the whole season. Hegarty, he's really for, found form at, of late at Flyhawk. Karevi always leads by example, maybe not so much last week, uh, but in discipline. The Reds really need to work on their discipline. They looked like they increased their discipline a little bit in the last few weeks, and then last week they had a pretty poor discipline game again. Uh, things that really bother their game, defensive errors now and then. Um, they usually defend rock solid and then every now and then a poor tackle and the other team slips through. And the Waratahs are a team that you can't afford to do that with. Um, you need to, the Waratahs need to win this game. If they want to pass the Rebels or the Reds, on the conference they're gonna need to win this game they won't be able to pass the rebels but they can get just under them if they if the rebels lose their game uh, both would want to win this game to challenge for top spot or at least just to get into a playoff position uh, both of them are five and six points below the rebels respectively the season for the Waratahs not the greatest one four out of eleven they don't, they're not playing real flashy rugby, um, but every now and then there's a moment of individual brilliance that has kept them in the running in their conference. Back in Australia for the first game, uh, the Waratahs, they lost their, four, their last three games over on tour, so they really want to get their first victory in four weeks. Then there's the Lions versus the Highlanders. The season for the Lions, 6 out of 11, where the Highlanders have had 5 out of 12. The Highlanders, they were great in their last 4 weeks. The start of the season, not that good, but this last 4 weeks have really stood out for them. Uh, the Sharks aren't playing this week. And like I said, for the other, other teams um, from the South African Conference, that's a time for everyone to pounce and get that top spot. Um, the Lions are only three points behind them, so they will really want to win, get that spot in the playoffs. The Lions, they've not been at their best at home, winning only three out of five. But history also 
not that easy to predict. Usually the home team wins. Um, it's five to the Lions and five to the Highlanders. The Highlanders also, they would want to get into that qualifying spot. They will have to win if they want to ensure the Chiefs or the Blues do not pass them um, at a stage in this last part of the season. Ayoani, the fly off for the Highlanders, he's been great in recent weeks. He re has the ability to cut through the line and then he's quick as well to, um, to back that up. And, and that's really good to see from him in this last few weeks. Yankees, Marks, the Yankees, they were in good form last week. Uh, Quagga Smith as well. Uh, so the Lions will want to have a good performance from those guys. For me, the Lions will win by eight. The last game of the week, the Stormers versus the Crusaders, who just thrashed the Bulls last week in Pretoria. Now they're playing at Newland. The Stormers will really be wary of this Crusaders side. Their respective seasons, the Stormers 5 out of 11 versus the Crusaders 9 out of 12, the best record in the competition. The Crusaders really scared off the other teams again last week um, after getting the Bulls by surprise with a very high tempo game in the high felt. Um, they are a really unforgiving team. They find your weaknesses, they grab onto it, and they strangle you to death with it. <laughs> if, if I can say it like that. They really just take every weak spot you have and go for that gap. Like last week, the wingers, defense of the Bulls, not the greatest. Um, so they went for that. Uh, the Stormers, their defense is a lot better than the Bulls' defense. Um, but every now and then they can have a little bit of a defensive lapse. The Crusaders, if they give away a lot of penalties, last week they actually did give away a lot of penalties. The Stormers actually have the ability to stay in the game if they take all the kicks at goal and get it over. But they will maybe do a better job than the Bulls, I, I feel, because they already have this little bit of a warning warning sign ahead of them the stormers attack it's a bit of, it's a bit flat footed their line outs very poor it's a bit problematic at times but when they actually get the line out their mall is very good the crusaders they will be looking at several reese again the the other team should just always be afraid of him he is going to score tries Mahunga at number 10 for the Crusaders, he's in the form of his life. The scrum for the Crusaders, not the best. It can be problematic at times, but other times it can be brilliant. For me, I can't see the Stormers pulling it over on the Crusaders. I, if they do, Stormers, I do support the Stormers, but don't think it's going to happen. That's why I'm wearing this shirt this week i think the crusaders will win by 12. that's it for the week guys if you like the video please subscribe down below here in the corner if you want to check out the fantasy video for the week it's here on my left hand side uh, it's not too late to join the super brew pool um, in the description below and that's it for the week cheers